I'm Henry Vaskin. We're going to be talking about pain management and getting older and how to prevent the pain next right here on Due Process. Major funding for Due Process is provided by Mead Lexus of Southfield and Mead Lexus of Lakeside, offering a large selection of new and pre-owned certified premium vehicles. The population in our country is aging. The share of the U.S. population aged 65 and older is expected to increase from 13% in 2010 to 19.6% in 2040. The needs of the aging or elderly population are different. It's one of the reasons the geriatric specialty exists. Physical therapy is treatment focusing on improving a person's function. Occupational therapy is treatment focusing on helping a person achieve independence in his or her day-to-day -day life. Thank you, I'm Henry Baskin, your host for this edition of Due Process. We're gonna be talking about pain management. We're gonna talk about our aging population with two very skilled people. Denise Navarro, yes. welcome to Due Process. Thank you. And Denise David, welcome. You are a physical therapist. Occupational. Occupational therapist, and you're a physical I'm therapist. A physical therapist. What are the two disciplines? How do they interact? How do they work together? Well, with physical therapy, we want to get the patient educated, learning good body mechanics, making them able to become more mobile. For mobility, we want to get them into function. Okay, that's right? a brief description of what it's you do. It's a very brief. What about occupational? There's carryover, of course, between all the disciplines and therapy, but probably one of the most basic differences is that with occupational therapy, we look at the self and the roles that the self plays throughout the day, and that's henceforth how we got the name occupation. I know it sounds mm -hmm. like we find people jobs, but we really don't. <laughs> right. Anything that we tend to do during our waking hours that is purposeful, that helps to find us, it's a self-driven science. Um, for example, somebody who is a sailor that might have had a knee injury, they would see a physical therapist first and then be referred to an occupational therapist to help them put all their body movement back together so that they can be functional in the arena that they need to be functional in. Okay, what, what is the, uh, the clinical definition then of physical therapy? It's try to teach people how to manage pain or how to get rid of pain or avoid pain. Well, I think right now it, with the aging population is what we're discussing. Right. It is now into managing it. Mm -hmm. So when you get to that age, but even before, even the younger people, the students that come in, right. we want them to know now how to manage, use good body mechanics. Where, where does that core strength, because that's the big buzzword, core strength, where does it come from? Get the mobility they need to do to function, whether it's going back to a sport, whether it's the elderly to get out of a chair. How do they move to get out of a chair? Well, that's interesting. Let's take the case of um, a, someone who's had a hip replacement. Mm -hmm. I've seen uh, arthroscopic surgery on knees for young kids, I mean exactly. 17, 18 year old yes. kids. What do you do when they come in? They come in, first of all, you just can't walk in the door and say, give me physical therapy. No, they need to come in with a prescription. They're so we have a protocol. Yes, they are referred by their doctor. And there's protocols for the different surgery types they have. But our main purpose will be to get down swelling and pain immediately. Okay. So then we can progress to getting some strengthening and mobility. How do you motivate people to say, at the end of the day, you're going to feel better? At the end of the day, with your people, you're going to be able to get around your house without assistance. Well, healing is a process, obviously. I mean, we wish it would happen overnight, but right. it doesn't. The body has its own agenda. Tissues have their own agenda for healing. Nerves have an entirely different agenda. They heal quite slowly. They do. So for somebody who is just starting out, you need to let them understand that they're not always going to feel this badly because healing is a process. Provided that they follow the protocol, don't make bad judgments, move too fast, or ahead of a schedule when the tissues aren't ready to carry load. If they follow the program, generally they will start to feel better. And you have a high success rate with what you do, right? Oh, yeah. yes. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, having been a victim of physical therapy at one time, 
my physician said, well, you're not a candidate for a hip. You're not a candidate for uh, steroids or whatever they you know, do. He said, go to physical therapy. So I went and learned how, I think, to manage things such as stretching and, and, and getting pressure off my back and things such mm-hmm. as that. If I have pain, for example, I just rub up against a wall with a tennis ball in between where the pain Absolutely. is. Absolutely. And after, it hurts, but after a while, I guess the blood... Well, it's called the hurt so good. It, it's hurt so good. Well, it doesn't hurt good while I'm doing it, but at the, but it, after I absolutely, get done... Absolutely, it hurts it so does. good. It does. But I'm concerned about, you know, what I heard on the radio today was that our aging population by 2026 is going to be devoid of caregivers. For some reason, the baby boomers are going to be need assistance to even get around their homes. There will be wheelchair-bound people. Is the idea of occupational and physical, is the idea to get people, keep them out of nursing homes, keep them out of facilities, and let them be in their own home? Is that That what you do? That would be ideal, but Mm -hmm. that's not the start point. That may be the new beginning for somebody Mm -hmm. But the real mission is for people to start to take care of themselves starting today. All right, so you're saying the real mission is to prevent it. Give me some tips about how people can, can admire their, their body enough to say, I'm not going to break anything. Because typically, older people who break something, that's sort of go, they're downhill from there. Well, they can be. I mean, clearly, prevention certainly is the key. But people are going to fall. And they are going to have broken bones. Of course, if you can prevent it, and we do this, and Denise might address it in a little bit, but we do it with balance programs to try to integrate some of the visual field awareness so that if you know you're going to fall, you have a mechanism where the body can right itself. But sometimes gravity just wins, and you (laughs) fall. (laughs) Yeah, unfortunately. But what do you tell your people? Well, How to prevent injury. The prevention comes from having good body awareness and okay. using good body mechanics. What does that mean, body awareness? Like? Well, when we start with exercises, you have to put them in front of a mirror because oh, people really? really don't know where their body is. You know, you ask them to raise their arm out to the side and they might be here instead of out here or to stand tall and where to keep their shoulder blades up, where their head is, and they're all slouched down and we bring them back up. So they have to have this awareness of where they are in space. I see. You can't start standing on one leg if you don't have your weight shifted evenly on both, that their pelvis is aligned, their shoulders aren't all crooked. And we bring them up to this awareness of where, what you look like. Because really? people are not aware of what they look like when they're walking they're, around. People are just aware of what they feel like. That's right. Not what they so, look like. So once they get that feeling, you bring that visual awareness to them, and they'll say, I feel uncomfortable. And I said, but you feel new, but you are in neutral. So therefore, when you feel uncomfortable, you know you're where you should be. And it starts to become who you are. Okay, so then people take that image of themselves Mm-hmm. and without using the mirror, like I hate to be walking around with a mirror all day. No, but... Here I am. You right, know, but, but then you start feeling it. You, you start feel it. feeling it. It's something that you just keep straightening yourself out throughout the day. Right. And what I will tell my patients is that the constant correction is re-educating your muscles and your memory of where you should be. Well, there's so many little tricks that you all have. Mm-hmm. I mean... People who, you know, have low back pain, for example, there's, there's a way that they say, well, raise yourself up in your seat or walk around. Don't sit in, you know, don't sit exactly. for eight hours. Keep mm-hmm. going, keep moving. And I found over a period of time that movement is very important. That Movement is a key component, particularly with people that have very poor alignment. Mm-hmm. When we first get them in a good posture, it's not comfortable because those muscles have been on vacation, mm-hmm. not holding them upright. So the goal is to try to teach them how to hold themselves upright. Mm-hmm. And just simple things, like instead of just get up and go, right. get up and go. Mm-hmm. You can still well, do the job. So but the problem with that is that when people get up and go... They feel, wait a minute, I used to be able to get up and fly across the room without the stop and the balancing and things such as that. Right. Making people aware that they 
need balance. Making people aware that they're older than they think they are has to be important because they're doing things they did when they were 20, but they shouldn't be doing them, I don't think. Well, we go into the education of modifying. We don't want anybody to stop exercising. We don't want to stop their activity. Right. But they may have to modify something. They might not be able to do as much, go as far as they did when they were younger, but we still want them to keep the activity keep going. going. Keep it you going. Know, I, I hear statistically they say, well, a five-minute walk is, is, is better than a ten-minute walk. Or, I mean, I, I, I don't know where it is, but my idea, I guess, would be that I would have these people just keep going until they can't anymore. I mean, I don't know if you, if you prescribe that. No. You know, keep no. going, push Wait, yourself. No. You don't. You no. say, don't push yourself. You, you, you build on it. So if you can't do something and you're, you're exhausted in a half hour of doing something mm -hmm. and you're down for the next day, you, you've lost. You've, right. you, you, so maybe do it for 15 minutes and mm -hmm. then you're going to find I wasn't down the next day. Do it for 20 minutes. Oh, I still am not down the next day. Build your tolerance back up, but you don't want to do something to exhaustion. I mean, okay. that, you know, younger people in bodybuilding, you do things to exhaustion. But now we're talking a different age group. We want to keep them active. We want to keep their lifestyle. So if they're in the garden, they might not be able to do a seven-hour day gardening. Or, or they're going to have to break it down to seven days. And they may have you to know? use their knees instead of bending over. Well, and they'll find little mo ways to modify, maybe a little stool, some cushioning pads. You, you have to think of the things that you're going to need. You might need a pole to help get you up because you can't well, freely see, stand up. That's the problem. When you start walking around with a pole and people say, you're an older person. You well, I didn't say pole. walk away, but if you it's had a it there, I, with, just... oh, we have all kinds of vanity things. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, that is a big okay. problem for us to have them break through the barriers. Well, yes, I mean, and I've then seen we call them with walkers or, or that uh, that cane that has three well, legs or something. But like what that. are they called? They're called assistive devices. That's a kind right. name for them. The, but that's it's what they are. It's called getting old and no, using it, a, a cane. But it's an assistive device, and I can, I'll can i tell my patients, you can either use your assistive device to go out to lunch with your girlfriends, or you can stay home and sit in your chair. Not a good idea. Tell me about, <laughs> what, do, what do I do with a, get a widow who's home, and she can't stand up to cook her food? She can't get to the refrigerator and do what what she wants to do. How do you teach these people? Is that part of occupational therapy? That is a big part of occupational therapy. I mean, clearly, uh, having an, an occupational therapist go in to do a home assessment is paramount. Okay. The most important issue is that somebody's safe. Well, tell me about that. Someone goes in and does a home assessment. Mm -hmm. For example, you're talking about the bath rails and bars and things like that? Throw rugs on the floor, uh, simple things like can you even reach up into a cabinet safely? Hold on for a second. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want you to tell me more specifics about home safety because it seems to be that there's an accident in the home more often than there is an accident anywhere else. We'll be right back. We're on due process talking about how to make you feel better. Stay tuned. Legal referrals and more information on this and other related topics are available on our website at www.dueprocess.tv. There you'll find information on today's program, helpful hints to legal issues, support materials, and lawyer referrals. You can also stream previous episodes of Due Process. Let's take a look at what you think. I believe that taxpayers should not have to pay for individuals who have physical or occupational therapy. Yeah, I guess anything to help the elderly. And Funding should probably come from maybe public sources. Uh, yes, they should definitely include as the insurance rate is very high. Obamacare, hopefully a lot of health issues will be resolved in the future. Hey, we're back on due process talking about uh, feeling better. You know, I could just say all together occupational therapy, physical therapy is about feeling better. You talk about a, a, a home inspection, uh, helping people get rid of things that they might trip on, fall on, and things such as that. You know that commercial that says, hey, I, I, I fell and I can't get up, and they, they call this thing. Is that true? 
Yes, absolutely. I mean, I had a patient a number of years ago who did not have a device, and she did fall and lay down the floor for three days. How? How? Well, what do you mean? She couldn't roll over? She, no, she had fractures. She couldn't move without pain, and it wasn't until a family member realized they had not heard from this person for a while and went to her home, and poor thing, was laying on the floor with a broken hip, she was an arthritic to begin with, but she did not have any recourse where she could call for help. Well, give me give me some tips for people. You know, I, one one thing I would like to interject is that I think that they should walk around their house with their cell phones. Absolutely, I mean, I be, be somewhere you where your cell phone mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. so yes. you can call for help. But go ahead, give me some other tips. But I think that's a very smart tip because think, you, see that? that's I a just good one. You think about that. We both have had patients that, with hip fractures, had to crawl to a phone mm-hmm. to call for help, and the, the right. pain must be excruciating. Wow. But clearly, as we said earlier, prevention is really the key. So, Give me some don't... ideas about the household, because you said Medicare used to pay for this? Medicare used to pay for a home assessment, and we're not certain. Uh, I, I don't think it's paid for no. anymore. No longer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Tell me some specific things for well, people to do. Can you walk in a door safely without tripping over the door jam? Do you have hand railings to even get up if you have a porch mm. where you can literally give yourself a little bit of mobility independence mm. rather than trying to navigate up steps on your own? Once you're in your home, how well can you move about? Do you have throw rugs that can be a hazard? Most falls in the home are generally in the bathroom, but there are falls elsewhere. But why are they in the bathroom? Because of the tiles, or people come out with wet feet if they're in the shower. They oh. don't. They don't think okay. about using a bath mat or drying yourself off in the shower first to make sure you're not going to slip on a wet floor. I, I think about this all the time. I used to just vault up and down steps. Now I use a handrail. I've just trained myself to use, to use a handrail. It, it to, takes a to go up steps. A millisecond of a slip for months of rehabilitation. So clearly prevention is the key. But simple things, just check for throw rugs, check for bathroom safety. Grab bars are great, both not just over the bathtub, but in a shower, so that if you feel a little unsteady, you've got something to hold on to while you Mm -hmm. step over the small lip that you need to get in and out of. Is there anything people should not attempt to do, such as climbing a roof or... You know. well, <laughs> no, but, of course. But you must have a lot of ladder injuries. You've seen those, haven't you? Well, it's the patients that are going to stand on something other than really a footstool or a little ladder. And, I mean, I know, right. of, a, I know of a person who, a patient in the past, that actually put a chair on the table to get up and reach something. Put a chair on the table? Mm-hmm. I think that was my grandmother. And then climbed your, up on the table. Her, your grandmother? <laughs> did that once. Oh, well, then that's where I heard it. <laughs> I, I started to yep. stand on a folding chair once I said, oh, I don't think exactly. this is a good idea. See, so you mm-hmm. trusted your instincts. Well, you weren't impulsive. Well, it, it didn't feel right. The chair right. didn't feel too stable. No, so but, um, I said, well, you know, I they used do to it. do it. That's what they'll say. But I used to be able so to do So is that. there someone that can go to my home, hypothetically, go to someone's home and say, hey, there's a problem here. Take care of this. Here's a checklist. Take care of these things. Uh, it's out there. I mean, like even the level of a sink has become a problem. I see sinks lower than they used to be put mm-hmm. in newer homes. Mm-hmm. Uh, things are, like even cabinets, people people shouldn't have a cabinet that's like 10 feet tall because they're not going to use it. Well, the problem exactly. is they're already in those homes. So I now we've got to go and modify that. So right. we would bring the important things down to maybe have to sit on the counter. You know, the cups they're going to use for their coffee, right. their glasses, any of those particular things from the low level and to the second level, they need to come down either on the first cupboard shelf or they got to come on the counter so oh. they can get to it. And then they say, well, I'd like to have a clean kitchen. And you well, say, would you rather have a clean kitchen? It, it really does get to that. People are vain about their homes, too, well, and, the, and the appearance. Baskets work really mm-hmm. well, though, okay. because you can put cereal boxes in, in those baskets? woven baskets, and they, they look very nice on the countertop. And in keeping with what Denise had mentioned, oftentimes shoulder patients cannot reach a back burner on a mm-hmm. stove. So do all your cooking on yeah. 
the front burners. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Be aware of environmental lighting as we oh, get older. Okay. So lighting is important. And you, yeah. you prescribe night lights for sure, don't you? Yeah. I use them in my house all the time. Right. The ones around the base of the yeah. walls. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's an imperative, right? Yeah. Even the airlines, for example, they have these, uh, the LED lights that are yeah. streaming down the aisles. Say, look at, when the lights go out or this plane doesn't make it, you follow those yeah. lights to the door, right? You want people to do that, do you not? I, I mean, that's, you know, that is just intelligent thinking. So there's mm -hmm. prevention and there's care mm -hmm. and then there's, information that is learned by you give them they can't have learned behavior but you give them what they should do techniques and you, techniques and then you tell them this is what you do and work with it get a tennis ball do what you want to do i showed you this tennis ball before we started taping you gave me six different ideas of how to use a tennis ball it. if in fact that was it but the point is you don't it, it's like i think in the state of florida I think the orthopedic surgeons are, there are more orthopedic surgeons than there are general practitioner doctors because older people have a tendency to fall and break something. Is it, do they, my question, well, do they break something and then fall or do they fall and then break something? It can happen both ways. It can happen both ways. And part of what we haven't talked about is once we get into educating what they need to do. With balance, you get, you get strong and you get balance. So mm -hmm. as we think about what is their problem, why can't they get up appropriately, or why are they tripping? And that I will ask all my patients, do you feel like you ever scuff your foot? Are you yeah. are not clearing the floor? Because they all wear the tennis shoes now. Is that good? Well, the problem is it's like a rubber stopper, and there's where you got to make sure your throw rugs are up, but if you really just can't clear the floor like our floor here, they're going to trip, whether they're with a walker or what. So strengthening lower extremities I and see. getting the legs strong enough to lift their legs because they've been kind of shuffling around, right. and they're not clearing the floor and all the little grooves in the raised cement in the sidewalks and everything, people are tripping on that. They're tripping on it. And they have to get stronger to lift their legs well, and clear the floor yeah. and learn basically but, how to walk again, too. Yeah, but it's a nice thought to say we'll get stronger, but it's like like we, we have this national problem with obesity. We say, well, if you don't eat, you'll, you know, but, you know, we have to deal with with the, the obesity and what it does to you, that affects balance too. Well, it, it does, I but mean, again, I, you can you you can you still need to be strong. That we're talking basic, just some really simple basic exer leg exercises. So they're clearing the floor, even when you're obese. You get yeah. you got to be using those muscles. You got to use it. Okay, mm -hmm. so if someone comes to you, how long do they usually stay with you in the program? Well, an it, occupational. It would depend on the pathology, of course. Some some cases, some folks three months, need to stay longer. Three weeks or how mm -hmm. long? I mean, what, Again, well, usually that's prescribed by the doctor. Isn't well, it? it is prescribed by the doctor. So it's a normal script is three times a week for four weeks. So they okay. come in looking at 12 visits. And that's Medicare or Medicaid or something? Well, that's, that is the law. Even Medicare has changed that to a certain degree. So okay. it, it's you may get 12 visits. But if you've met your goals, which is what we want you to do, mm -hmm. then 12 visits may not be necessary. You can meet okay. your goals in eight, eight visits. Do you, this is a two-edged sword, but do you prescribe or, or do you tell people you shouldn't take those drugs because you're going to lose balance if you take those painkillers that, you know, you take because they relieve your pain, but they're not doing what they're supposed to do, except relieve pain. I would, I, I would never tell a patient not to take their pain medication, but I tell them as we start show, treating and managing the pain, our goal is that they cut back on their medication so they don't need to depend on that kind of medication. Well, it causes some kind of fogginess and some kind of issues with their feelings about their body. Particularly the well, narcotics. Definitely, the narcotics. definitely. Yes. Yeah. But our goal is to help them to get off of that. I mean, we have the modalities and treatments, and we start 
right off the top with that. If they come in where they're on narcotics and they they're obviously have a pain level quite high that we want to manage and get the pain down so they can tolerate getting their, their mobility and their function back. We just have under a minute left in this program, but I, I expect that this is just the beginning of physical and occupational therapy demands put on the professionals because as people get older, they're not going to get healthier. They're just going to suffer from these injuries we talk about. Yeah. But the home assessments should be done by some organization, right? Or somebody. Ideally, it would be mm-hmm. beneficial to have you know, if, a, if an I, organization that is knowledgeable, but even in your own home, a loved one, a daughter, yeah, a right. son. A, a family member can, can do, do it. Can do an assessment, and even with someone who has very mild dementia but may still be safe at home, mm-hmm. if you don't feel comfortable keeping them at home because they might turn the stove on if it's electric, yeah. hit the fuse box. Yeah, yeah you got Just it. Hit the fuse box, yeah. and then they'll never well, turn it on. What you guys should know is we're out of time. That's okay. okay. Shows over, they yeah. turn the light out, but you know what? Was a good this is a field that's going to keep on growing. And we never even got it. to the importance of people taking care of themselves. Yeah, yeah well, sure. that's, it's sort of implied <laughs> that they have to do well, it. Well, the problem with, with our profession that we're seeing right now is the reimbursements from insurance doesn't for our yeah, jobs. It's a whole other issue. It's a whole I mean, other they, issue. they don't. You know, I think the issues are Major funding for due process is provided by Mead Lexus of Southfield and Mead Lexus of Lakeside, offering a large selection of new and pre-owned certified premium vehicles.